Welcome back everybody. Today we have an amazing show. We have the most naturally gifted, talented speedway rider of all time. This guy was great and a two-time world champion. His name is Ronnie Moore. I must say that out of all the speedway riders that are out there, Ronnie Moore has a special place in my heart. He was one of the most naturally gifted speedway riders. He was the youngest world champion at the age of 21 at that time. But going back to the age of 13, when Ronnie was just a young child, a preteen, a teen, his dad, Les, was a motorcycle buff. He liked motorcycles. That's where Ronnie Moore got that from his dad. And he went ahead and built this wall of death in his backyard in Hobart. He went ahead and built this wall of death so he could go ahead and make the show. Les made this circuit going to fairgrounds and shows and special events all over New Zealand and Australia. He went ahead and had this particular event and it was called the Wall of Death. Now, many fathers would not allow their children to race the wall of death. But Les was a different kind of father, and he needed more riders. And he turned to young Ronnie and he said, Hey, Ronnie, are you game to do the wall of death? And Ronnie said, I am game anytime. Ronnie was a naturally gifted motorcycle rider. He was a talent. And he went ahead and just joined that circus, that Wall of Death Circus. They traveled all over. It was like a traveling circus show. And Ronnie Moore was a young rider at the age of 13, riding the Wall of Death. This is where I believe that Ronnie acquired his skills for riding a motorcycle. These skills carried Ronnie for his entire racing career. Looking back at history, there was several Speedway riders who participated in that particular thing, the Wall of Death, but none were as young as Ronnie Moore at the age of 13. They call it the Wall of Death because it was very dangerous, and several people died in that Wall of Death, and there was no place for a young 13-year-old boy to be riding that. A couple of years later, Ronnie was introduced to Speedway and rode his first Speedway bike. And by the age of 17, he was a really good rider. And he and his father, they went to England, went to London to sign a contract to ride for the Wimbledon Dons. And he made a whopping like eight pounds a week in his first contract. Ronnie was primarily a pole rider. A pole rider, that's a good place to be. They asked Ronnie, why did you become a pole rider? And Ronnie Moore said, that is the fastest way around the track. As a young rider, there was a group of older riders. They formed a group called the Clan, and they'd always knock Ronnie Moore off the bike. They'd crash him into the wall or crush him in the dirt. Ronnie Moore got really mad because he was just a young kid. He was just a newbie, a fresh speedway rider, but he was getting pissed off. These guys formed this group and he knew they were coming after him. So the next time that he raced one of these clan members, Ronnie Moore took him out, put him into the wall. And Ronnie Moore was happy. That was the first time he did that. And the clan member came up to Ronnie after the race and said, I'm really mad at you. You put me in the wall. And Ronnie said, you put me in the wall five times and I put you in the wall once. I still have four more left. And they came back about five minutes later and said, Ronnie, you're a member of the clan. Ronnie raced against all these really great riders in his day. There were some good riders like Ivan Majors, Barry Briggs, and a whole list of good riders. He didn't back down to anyone. He raced against all the best. And a reporter came up to Ronnie after the race one day and said, Ronnie, Who's the toughest opponent you've ever raced against? And Ronnie said, Oh, Funden. Now, Ove won five world championships. 
He won one in the late 50s, and he won four in the 60s. He was really a great writer, and he's a friend of mine on Facebook, and I was waiting to hear what he had to say about Ronnie Moore, but he has not replied. In 1990, years after Ronnie retired, he was asked by a reporter, like, have you had any crashes and did you ride hurt? And Ronnie Moore looked at that reporter like he was out of his mind and he said, excuse me, but I won my first world championship in 54 with a broken leg. I scored a maximum of 15 points. I think I was injured when I won my first championship, my world championship with a broken leg. Is that tough or what? Most writers would be in the popcorn gallery, the peanut gallery, the hot dog stands if they had a broken leg. And Roddy Moore just sawed off that cast and he was the youngest world champion at that time at the age of 21. To watch Roddy Moore race, you would think that you saw one of the most naturally gifted speedway riders of all time. He was just a joy to watch. He was just a fluid rider, natural, he was smooth as glass. Ronnie Moore was an incredible rider. He won two world championships and he was three times in second place. If he had won those second place finishes, he would have been a five time world champion. Ronnie Moore rode an incredible 17 seasons with the Wimbledon Dons. I would say that Ronnie Moore was a Wimbledon Don. His final season was in 1974. He switched teams. He wasn't a Don no more. He should have stayed a Don, but he went to a good team too. He was a Coventry B. Ronnie Moore was a B. Godfather of American Speedway, Harry Oxley, he called Ronnie Moore and said, Hey, Ronnie, I want you to come over to Coast Mason Race. Ronnie Moore flew over. Harry probably paid for the ticket. And Ronnie was riding the Southern California circuit. He raced at Coast to Mesa. He raced at all the tracks. Let's see, Tuesday night Ventura, Wednesday San Bernardino, Thursday Arundel, Friday in Coast to Mesa, and Saturday Bakersfield. He rode all the tracks, and then his visa expired. He didn't know what to do. So they went ahead and said, hey, fly to Canada. And he flew to Canada so he could land in a different country. He fixed the visa. He came back and he raced more in California. And Ronnie Morris said he liked the Southern California circuit. He never raced the small racetracks before. And he said he liked it because you really had to think fast and you had to turn real fast. And the speedway was really moving fast on the small track. And Ronnie was a family man. He had a beautiful wife. He had four lovely children. They're all daughters. He had, can you imagine the bathroom with four daughters? That was Ronnie Moore. One of Ronnie's daughters, Shawnee, is a friend of mine on Facebook. And I asked her yesterday, hey, Shawnee, what's your father? What was he like? And she said he was a good man. He was kind hearted. He was sweet. He was a hard worker. Ronnie Moore worked in a foundry. He poured all that hot liquid. He just was a great hard worker. He was a great guy, great speedway champion, and he was kind hearted. He didn't fight, he didn't yell. Ronnie Moore was a terrific man. One of the things that I like about Ronnie Moore, he didn't brag. Ronnie Moore had all these accomplishments, he had all these trophies, he had all these successes. Ronnie Moore was just one of the most fantastic writers of his era, and he never bragged about it. He didn't seem to care after his race days were over. He didn't really want to talk about it. Sad to say, Ronnie's career officially came over with, in 1975, a new South Wales. He had this horrific crash at the end of the season. It was horrible. I mean, he nearly died. He, they expected him to be dead. And he was in the hospital for six months. He lost his hearing. He had to have a hearing aid. He was literally wiped out. He was, should have been dead, but Ronnie Moore wasn't going to die. And he came back. Ronnie came back at the Moore Park Speedway. He bought a speedway track and he named it after himself, the Moore Park in Christchurch. And he went ahead and started teaching young speedway riders. He came back as a teacher. He didn't leave his craft. 
He went ahead and wanted to pass that on to the younger generation. He would teach the kids that they would have to have a sideline, a business, in order to race Speedway overseas, because Speedway isn't forever. And he went ahead and flew all over New Zealand teaching the kids. It was a little expensive, so he had to stop it. But Ronnie was a teacher, and he had that Speedway track. He just loved Speedway. He loved the Junior Speedway program. He just loved everything about Speedway. And that's why we think Ronnie Moore is one of the legends, because after his Speedway days, he continued to promote the sport of Speedway. A reporter once asked Ronnie, did you have a lot of engine problems? And Ronnie said, no, not really. And the reporter was shocked because Ronnie raced like, what, 18 seasons in the British League. And he said, how could you not have engine problems after 18 seasons? And Ronnie Morris said, I went ahead and totally rebuilt my engine after every three or four races. He changed all the valves, the valve guides. He did everything, pistons. Ronnie Moore always had fresh motorcycles. Getting back to Ronnie's Speedway coaching days, he went ahead and taught the riders the gift of the throttle control. He said, no, 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 it's not the handlebars and all this stuff. It's the throttle. You must learn to control the throttle. That's the key to success, Ronnie Moore said. When you're coming out of the turn and your wheels are spinning real fast, it's not good to give it more gas. Let off the gas a little bit. Let the tires bite in and grip, and then it launches you forward. And you win that race, hopefully. So Ronnie Moore was teaching these kids the finer art of Speedway. And throttle control is very important. Even after he retired from the sport of Speedway, and when he got older, he was a daredevil. Ronnie went ahead and he liked to fly the stunt planes and do the flips. He had an old, like, 1930 Tiger his friend had, and he would get in that plane, and he would do all these loops and stuff. I've done that before, too, but not in the Tiger. And it's really fun, and Ronnie Moore just was just a daredevil, and he got down from the plane, and he said, I just feel that rush, and he just... Sad to say, Ronnie passed away August 18th, 2018, at the age of 85. He lived a full and rich life. All that daredevil stuff he did from the early days of motorcycle riding at the Wall of Death to Speedway and the airplanes. He had just a very good life, and Ronnie Moore was sorely missed by all who knew him. Ronnie Moore, one of the most unbelievable gifted talents, naturally gifted talents in Speedway history. He was just unbelievable. He won those world championships. He was a father. He was a son. He was a husband. Ronnie Moore was just an incredible man. He was a hard worker. He worked hard for his family. And he was just a kind, humble, generous man. And we're going to miss Ronnie Moore. And...